and I'll guide your attention specifically to the tail of the normal distribution. And based on normal distribution theory, we would expect uh, approximately 2.27 or 2.3 rounded, in rounded terms, we expect 2.3 percent of our sample to be greater than two standard deviations above the mean. And conversely, we also expect about 2.3 percent of the sample uh, to be less than negative 2.0 on the left side of the distribution. So we expect roughly about 5% of our sample uh, to be greater or lesser than two standard deviations above and below the mean, or greater than two, uh, two standard deviations above, above the mean. So in any sample that's actually normally distributed, if you use the two standard deviation rule, then you would be eliminating, uh, on average, 5% of your data even if you had a perfectly normal distribution and had definitely no outliers, you would be removing 5% of your sample unjustifiably. All right, so these tails exist in a normal distribution and you expect it. The two standard deviation rule ignores this rule, this fact. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, I've redone the, uh, uh, the frequency diagram. I'm just redisplaying it, and I can tell you that there's one. It was, in fact, one, and that corresponds to 1% of the sample. It's 100 observations that were created by the program that created this normal distribution. It's not perfectly normal. It's within sampling variations of a normal distribution, so it's 1% and 4%, and we expect, based on the normal distribution, we expect... 2.3% on either side. And we can see it's 1% and 4%. And roughly, I can tell you that's not a statistically significant observation. 1% versus 2.3% when your sample size is only 100 is totally, it should be totally expected. And on this side, it's a little bit higher than you might expect in a perfect uh, distribution, but within sampling variations, 4% versus 2.3, that's nothing to get excited about. Now, what I've also done is I've created a Another normally uh, distributed uh, sample with data uh, corresponding to a hundred, a thousand observations. So this is going to be a lot more stable, a lot more robust. And lo and behold, what you get is again uh, several observations that are greater than or lesser than two standard deviations from the mean. And it corresponds even more closely to what you expect based on the theoretical distribution. So it's supposed to be 2.3% as I showed above here, it's supposed to be 2.3% on this side of the tail and 2.3% of observations on this side and what we get is 2.2 and 2.3. Now again, if you applied the rule of two, two standard deviations above and greater than the mean, people would eliminate this and that's totally illogical, totally unjustified to do that. It's totally expected to get observations greater than two or, or less than, or, or negative 2.0, or even greater than that. In a, in a sample size of 1,000, we expect uh, about 22 on one side and about 23 on the other side. That's what we got here, and that's about what you would expect. So in summary, in a normal distribution, one should expect to observe values greater and lesser than two standard deviations away from the mean. It's totally expected. It's totally normal. Uh, an example in, in uh, real-world terms is that people with an IQ of 130 are not outliers. Uh, for those who don't know, an IQ test, well, most IQ tests have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So if you multiply 15 by 2, two standard deviations away from the mean on the, on the higher side, on the positive side of the tail, corresponds to an IQ of 130. So anyone who scores an IQ of 130 or greater is not necessarily an outlier. They may just be part of the normal distribution. Therefore, the 2SD rule is not useful for identifying outliers. It's definitely harmful. Do not use it. And of course, the big question is, well, if we can't use this nice, simple rule. It's, not, it's, it's nice in that it's simple, uh, but it's not useful. Uh, what can we use as a rule for identifying outliers? And I'm going to treat that very question in another video, and I encourage you to watch it to see how I identify outliers. Thanks for watching.